Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. If you live in the Aurora area, this morning you woke up to a nice, dense fog. I love fog. It was a beautiful fog, especially as the sun was coming up through the fog and just starting to pierce through. Uh, by now, the fog has lifted. It's gone. But for a time, the fog was making it a little more difficult to see, especially if you were having to drive, because it was pretty thick and pretty dense. In the Old Testament, we have this image of fog or this image of a veil. Both are present in the Old Testament. This idea that God's glory, the fullness of who God is, is covered in a veil. And there are two reasons for this in the Old Testament. One, it's for protection. God's people are afraid of his glory. As sinners, they could drop dead in the presence of God. And so especially Moses, uh, whenever Moses is in the presence of God and comes back to the people, his face starts shining. It's reflecting the glory of God. And he wears a veil over his face to hide that glory from the people. And that protects the people. It keeps them from being afraid. The other idea, though, behind the veil is that because of lack of faith, people are veiled. They're not always able to see, recognize, or know who God is. With that in mind, I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll begin with verse 12. And here Paul writes, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. This is that the glory would fade, and Moses didn't want the people to see the glory fade, another reason he wore the veil. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I mentioned earlier we had this dense fog, this veil, if you will, over the, the sky. And then the sun was coming and starting to pierce through that veil, pierce through the fog. We are all born into sin. Our hearts, our eyes, they're veiled. We're not able to see God and know who he truly is. But Jesus, God's Son, pierces through the fog, lifts up the veil, and through Jesus we are able to truly know who God is. Who is God? He's the one who loves us, who gives of himself for us. And we ultimately see that in Jesus who gives of himself, gives up his life in death on the cross. Through faith in Christ, the veil is lifted and we are able to know God, love him, trust him, and be his forever. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the fog. That means that we have moisture again in, in our atmosphere, moisture in our soil. And we thank you, Lord, for that moisture. Lord, we also thank you for the sun that pierces through the fog so that we can see. And Lord, ultimately, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who pierces through the fog of sin in our hearts, who lifts up the veil so that we can truly know you, love you, and belong to you forever. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Pray God's blessings on your day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Amen.